welcome back to Reopening the X-Files, Marina and Nate's rewatch of the TV phenomenon, The X-Files. I'm Nate, also known as the Ultimate Movie Geek, and once again I am joined by the enigmatic Agent Powell. Hello. You alright? Alright. How are you doing? Not bad. Yeah? Yeah. Good. <laughs> I say that like we haven't seen each other, but you've been, you, you been under my feet all day. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been under your feet all day. Yeah. Uh, so, we're back for episode 13, which I think is a really, really, really good episode, um, Beyond the Sea, which opens up the character of Scully a lot for the first series. It gives her some back, back, some backstory and characterization, which I think is, uh, is needed to help push the series forward. What do you think of it? Oh, do we need to do the plot first? Shall I reach? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. See the plot. <laughs> the plot of the episode uh, sees Scully's father die right at the beginning. So, yeah, right. And it's Christmas as well. Christmas time, yeah. Um, and her skepticism put to the test by Luther Lee Boggs, a prisoner on death row who claims to have psychic powers. And uh, there's also a, a Zodiac style kidnapper and killer, isn't there? Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's basically it. Off you go. Uh, <laughs> it's alright. You don't like this one? I, I don't know. I think I've watched it a couple of times more recently. I can't remember it that well. And it doesn't stand out for me. I think it's an interesting one because, again, it explores the sort of, well, you don't know what it is, like psychic ability to you know, connect with the dead and all the rest of that. Yeah. I think what's most interesting about this is that you see Scully believing in something yes. for the first time. The roles are reversed, aren't yeah. they, completely in this. Mulder is a complete sceptic and Scully uh, can, can see... So it goes back to the question that's raised in the M. Night Shyamalan film, Signs. Are you kind of person who sees signs? Uh, I think I'd see them, but only after the fact. Yeah. You know, hindsight. Hindsight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it is interesting because Mulder's got a thing about psychics and yeah, um, sort of liaising with the dead. He's not a fan of it, is he? And he no. doesn't believe it's true, which is quite he wants weird to believe. considering he <laughs> believes in Everything aliens else. and green men and chupacabras and werewolves and whatever else you can think of. Um, where Scully is very, very scientific, but yeah. I think what is drawn on is that she's grieving yes. as well. And grief, especially for a parent, is horrific. And you probably, if somebody is saying all these things that make sense to you about your dad, you would so more, you would want to believe that, you'd want yeah. to, you know, and I can speak from personal experience, you'd want to believe that person and think that your dad is trying to get you a message or whatever. So it is, it's interesting because it sort of, it explores quite a few things in yes. this episode. Um, I mean, obviously a big thing that happens in this, Mulder's shot as well, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, first time in the series. Yeah. Uh, an early he's not shot every you. series, but he's shot. First time in the series yeah. of, of the X-Files. <laughs> he gets shot again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he's out of it a lot of this episode. Yeah. Um, it is more about a Scully episode isn't yeah, it it's a scully episode the guy yeah. who plays a serial killer what's brad dourif yeah played um, a voice chucky well i suppose he was in it as well he played yeah he was, a he was also a uh, grimmer worm tongue in, in lord, lord of, of the, the rings. rings yeah he's actually a very good actor in this i, I was laughing i was like oh. he's proper proper going for his oscar there oh. but like oh, you just said this he's a good actor yeah he uh he was he, he's um he was oscar nominated yeah. actor He's very good in this. Yeah. Um, plays the part very well of the man on the death, you know, death row. Yeah, yeah he does. Yeah. Who's desperate, um, and you kind of, you don't mean you don't feel sorry for him, but he's actually telling the truth. Yeah. Yes, he is. You don't really cause... get what's going on. It's weird. No. Well, I think you have to take everything that he says as truth. truth. Yeah. Because there's a moment in it where, because like like I say, we said Mulder is the sceptic in this episode. He goes in with a piece of cloth 
that he's in an evidence bag, which he's Mulder's pretending is part of the crime scene, and he hands it to to Boggs, and Boggs does all this, like he said, yeah, he's going for his Oscar. He's like, oh, I can. Hurt, oh. hurt, pain. I'm seeing a yeah. a and stuff, stuff like that, and uh, and then <laughs> seeing the word. I'm, I'm seeing the word nice. a. Eight months. <laughs> That's Phoenix Knights. I'm gonna use what I look like. <laughs> I look at you. <laughs> look at you. I'm getting a word. Word nonce. nonce. <laughs> um, for for our uh, non UK audience, check out uh, yeah. Peter K's Phoenix Knights. Peter K's Phoenix Knights. <laughs> know what that reference is. Very good. Um, but yeah, and then Mulder at the end of the the show, because it is a show, he's putting on a show. He says, "Well, I, I tore that from my was it New York Knicks, Knicks t shirt, yeah, just before." So it's just it's nothing. No. But like I say, you've got to take it all as truth because he is still channeling these spirits or whatever he yeah. is. It's nothing to do with the the cloth that he touched. But it, it again, it goes back to that question: Do you see signs? And Scully is the one who sees it because he comes out of all this stuff like a a waterfall. It's not a waterfall. And then yeah, she sees a stone angel. Yeah, and she's leaving, isn't she? She's there uh, going. Yeah. and she's driving, and she sees this hotel, and it's got a neon sign. It's like Niagara, Niagara Hotel, isn't it? And it's, so it's a like neon a waterfall, waterfall. And she looks across the street, and there's a stone angel. Yes. So that's how she sort of finds where this guy's been keeping these teenagers. Who what did I say? It is, it is basically just hindsight, isn't it? Yeah. But it's very, um, it is very like the Zodiac killings yes. you mentioned. Yeah, the, the Cause he, two he, kids. That's how this, this episode opens up. Obviously, apart from Scully seeing a dead yeah. death. So that's I found that dead creepy. Like, well, we're... Oh, yeah, starts, so you want to describe that then? We'll go back to the beginning of the yeah. episode. <laughs> Scully starts, this is us, we're all over the place. Scully literally is there with the parents of yeah. Christmas. She's made them a meal. They're like, right, we're going to go. Dad's quite thing. He's like, let's go now. And her mum... A mum's like, oh, okay. So you can tell he's a real disciplinarian. Well, he's in Navy, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so they kind of go quite quickly. And the mum sort of gives him a nod as if to say, say something to her. So he just yeah. asks how work is. Quite polite. And then they kind of leave. And Scully's asleep. He sort of cuts to Scully asleep. She's falling asleep on the settee. Yeah, like, and it's like, like half <laughs> one or whatever in the morning. Yeah. And she's watching probably Christmas movies like we all do. And then the phone ring. Well, she the phone rings and she... No, no, she, she wakes, wakes up, up and she sees him. Yeah, and she sees her dad sat in a chair and she's sort of talking. I'm going, I thought you'd left with mum. And he's mouthing okay? And he's mouthing, but there's nothing coming out. So it's like he's on mute. Yeah. And then the phone rings. So she picks the phone up and looks back, he's gone. And it's a mum to say, Your she dad an hour yeah. ago. So that's really, I don't know, I found that quite creepy. It's creepy, but I think when the, there are like stories of people who have yeah. been through a loss like that, and they do say that they've, yeah. they've seen a lot of things people, before. And you don't know because whether it's that dream state, that's how I yeah. probably explain it away. You know, you're All right, going, Scully. But people <laughs> will often, and my and like my mum's, someone in my mum's family had it, um, was asleep in the bed and they woke up and the person was sat on the bottom of the bed and they died the day before. Yeah. And they had a full-on conversation with them. Now, if that was me, I'd probably wake up the next day and think that was a complete dream. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's quite a common thing. But that's how it starts anyway, mm, and yeah. that's where you then go down this avenue of it's Scully. I think she's different in this episode, and yeah, that's she why is. she's more open to yeah. it. Um, she does find this warehouse where the next shot in the series at the beginning is two kids are sort of making out in a car. Looks yeah. like a police officer goes over there. Torch light, up to right his in face, isn't it? So you can't see his face. He's wearing yeah. like a leather jacket that looks like a... A yeah, policeman's and then uniform. they're actually they're abducted, but then it's a known thing, and that the yeah, it's you know said it happened once murdered. before. They thought it was like a one-off murder a year yeah. ago, and then it's happened again. So it's a serial thing. Yeah, and they've got five days. And she before sort of finds up. this place that he temporarily yes. kept them, and um, using what he'd said. Yeah, um, and she kind of goes back, doesn't she? And it's just her on her own because obviously. Mulder's incapacitated, he gets yeah. incapacitated. Well, that's later on, isn't it? Because mm. he, um, uh, Boggs says to Mulder, he warns Mulder to stay away from the White Cross. Yeah. And they're, they're down at the docks and then the chasing, I think it, they're chasing the killer, not yeah. the killer, the, the kidnapper. And he stands in front of a painted white sail. Yeah, on the dock. And yeah. he doesn't, Mulder doesn't see it, which... 
you know, it, it, it's it, it's like psychicness is his blind spot, yeah. <laughs> strangely. Um, and he doesn't see it, he gets shot, and then Scully covers him up, and again, with the hindsight, she sees the cross. Yeah. And there it is. So, like I say, it is true. It, it, he seems to have the sight, but he also then offers Scully a message because she has seen her dad mouthing something she didn't know what she, he was saying and she's got all this doubt about giving up her medicine career to pursue the fbi and she doesn't know if her dad um accepted that yeah she also so there's that backstory yeah. yeah um and bog says i can give you that message um if you help me because he, he's he's going to be executed so yeah I, I would like as well when they talk to him and he knows that he's going to be executed and he's actually scared. Yeah. Because he knows all the people that he killed are going to be, gonna be there. there. They're all to waiting. Judge him. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, that's almost, I think, if you know anybody who, you know, has been murdered or, you know, whatever, their life's been taken away by somebody else, you probably would want that. You probably think, you know what I mean? I hope you do have to deal with all that you've done in life. I hope it comes to bite you on the Judgment. ass. Yeah. Yeah. I quite like that they touch on that in this as well. Mm. Yeah. But does that show that he's uh, reformed then? Or do you yeah. think he's just fearing for his life? I think he's like any human and you'd just be fearful for your life or whatever comes after that. You yeah. know, you're at, at the end of the day, it'd be nice to think that people can reform. I think some people can. I don't yeah. think some people are past it. No. Um, and people always want to look out for their own skin, don't they? Yeah. Um, just quickly before we move on to everybody's favorite part of the this of the episode, the show, um, he doesn't get a stay of execution, but he asks Scully to be there during the execution so that he can tell her what her father said, and in a twist, even though that she's leaning towards believing in everything, that the screen goes up and. She's not there. So Scully doesn't know what the final like message from her father is. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, but she doesn't give him the satisfaction, yeah. does she, of being there like he's asked? Yeah, because yeah. he could he could have just said he didn't say nothing or, or yeah, something that could nasty. Have been his last yeah, torment. his last torment. Yeah. yeah. I like that, that's good. All right then, everybody's favourite part of the show. Fanboy fact. I still haven't done the the uh, the synthesizer stuff. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Fun fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, we've already mentioned this, but this episode shows uh, the protagonists reversing their usual roles of believer and skeptic for the first time, but not for the last. There's a lot of good episodes where Scully uh, is believing and Mulder's like, it's completely skeptical. And it's like, shut up, Mulder, you're a knob. He's probably doing it just to get on a <laughs> weekend. Yeah, she does he does all. actually believe. Yeah. And he's like, I'm, I'm enjoying she this so much. She always rains on his career. Yeah. He's like, ah, right, you believe in so I'm going to be the opposite. <laughs> you believe in God, dear? Well. <laughs> um, oh, I've, uh, I've not written that one down properly. But uh, the writers, Morgan and Wong, um, their episode was written in response to criticisms of the show's uh, limited characterization of Scully. Uh, Wong said Gillian Anderson needed to show her her talents more, and this was a perfect opportunity to dispel those notions that Scully will never believe. Which it does. It, it shows that she can. Yeah. It was time for the character to grow because she was just doing the same thing too yeah. often and she would have got boring she's just that scientific yeah. straight rod isn't and, she and she does get on your nerves at some point but um executives at fox vetoed the idea because they believed it was too similar to science of the lambs which ha it has got a lot of links towards that yeah hasn't it? yeah this she's, episode. she's his puppet he's on death row yeah and the, like i said they vetoed it two times before chris carter told the network that they're doing it yeah so he had to say we're doing it <laughs> But you have to have that characterization for if to it's grow. A, yeah, yeah if it's a two person show you can't just focus on one person no because it, it things go stale. Uh, Chris Carter had to lobby uh, hard for the casting of Brad Dourif as serial killer Luther Lee Boggs. Dourif was more expensive than the usual guest star, 
uh, but Carter knew that he was perfect for the role. He rang the president, Peter Ross, at his home on Thanksgiving to plead his case. <laughs> Roth agreed to it mainly because he wanted to get back to his dinner. Now I don't know if this is true. I'm just getting this off That's the internet. I like that, but yeah, <laughs> you're like, come on, my turkey's going cold. Yeah, right. Get off, Chris. Go away. Um, uh, this is one of Julian Anderson's favorite episodes, which is understandable because she's getting most she's of the screen time, isn't screen she? It, yeah, and time. it's also Chris Carter's favorite episode of the season. Right. Uh, which is strange because it is. It's away from the main. Story, yeah, isn't it? it? Is. It's again. It's just kind of standalone one, isn't yeah. it? Uh, in the scene, this is this is what interests me and made me laugh when you were talking about the the scene with her father. In the scene where he appears in as a vision, um, Don S. Davis, uh, the actor who plays Scully's father, is mouthing the Lord's Prayer. Oh. So I'll have to go back and look and see okay. which part of it yeah. <laughs> it was. Uh, one of the killers named. Uh, the, the killer's name is Lucas Henry. Um, there was a real-life American serial killer named Henry Lee Lucas, uh, subject to the movie Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer in 1986, which starred... Oh, Yondu from Guardians of the Galaxy, Michael Rooker. All right. I remember that. Uh, Mulder addresses Scully as Dana while inquiring to her well-being in the first scene, presumably because he heard of uh, her father's death. She hesitates and mouths her name to herself before responding. Oh. <laughs> I don't, I don't care about that. You set us up. You're in on this with Lucas Henry. Yeah. This was a trap for Mulder because he helped put you away. Well, I came here to tell you that if he dies because of what you've done, four days from now, nobody will stop me from being the one that'll throw the switch and gas you out of this life for good, you son of a bitch! Dana, you're the one that believed me. No! No, I do not believe you! Baseball cap. <laughs> my cap I couldn't cap. say my cap cap. cap. That's how it's Maybe you believe it. Cap, baseball cap from the episode Fallen Angel. He's seen hanging up. Uh, while the series is known for its alien storylines and using its standalone stories, it has also dealt extensively was in the area of seemingly. That one time when I was 14, <laughs> and my parents had gone to bed, and I snuck downstairs all alone. Which also Got one of my mom's cigarettes and went out onto the porch in the dark. I was so scared. Um, Brad Dorf. No, my this heart is, was uh, beating. Uh, I mean, they would have killed me if they knew. God's sake, I can't talk. This but I was so excited. Brad Not because of the cigarette, I mean, it was gross, but because I wasn't supposed to. season was. You can't remember. Do you remember which episode? It could be a moment for many. Harry Snodgrass in the fourth episode. I know what you want. Because we talked about that. Yeah. And I know who you want to talk to. Yeah, Yeah, that one. Why don't you just go ahead and ask me? That was more uh, Joy Cotic, wasn't it? (laughs) I believe you. I believe Cow Basket. If you Uh, let (laughs) me talk to you. It's the second time the line, I want to believe, is heard in the series. The first was... Nine episodes earlier. In which episode? Find you it again. <laughs> and that's the end of fanboy facts. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'll, I'll stand it up there. I love that. Yeah, I know that. It, like I say, it's, uh, it's got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like that, that I, it, it's, I, mean, I do. I don't enjoy it. Cats, I don't enjoy it, but it's not one of my favourites. No, it, well, I think it's got. Star we, we, we have these playing on in the background silently, and it's just got to the scene where Bob is about to be executed. Anyway. Oh no no. Tomorrow, no. Another one, which. Nobody talks to anybody until I get a deal. We had to skip through it because it. Don't underestimate my fear of dying and don't downplay my terror going back to that chair. Remember, you can follow on Twitter at Movie Ultimate and Instagram and Facebook on at Ultimate Movie Geek.
please share, like, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow. Stay safe. I'm ready. Oh, no, it's gone off. I know my hell's going to be to going back to that chair over and over again for all the time. But in this life, my one and only life, I don't ever want to go back again, ever!